Hello and welcome to the Microwave Optics Laboratory exercise. In this exercise you're going to be using microwaves to investigate some of the effects of electromagnetic radiation. So you're going to be using microwaves because their wavelength is of the order of centimetres which makes it easy to observe the phenomena, the interference and diffraction in the laboratory. So there's three parts to this experiment. In the first part, you're going to be measuring the wavelength of your microwaves. You're going to be doing this by setting up standing waves. So I'd recommend that you revise the standing waves on the string experiment from Physics 1A before coming to this lab, because you're going to have to relate maximums and minimums to wavelength in the first part of this experiment. In the second part of the experiment, you're going to be investigating polarization, which is a really interesting part of electromagnetic radiation. You're going to be conducting an experiment to investigate Marlis's law, which tells us that the intensity of light is equal to the initial intensity, the intensity at the source, times cos squared theta, where theta is the angle between the polarization of the light and the polarizer. So you'll be observing how the intensity changes as you add additional polarizers and as you change the angles between the polarizers. In the third part of the experiment, you're going to be investigating Young's double slit. You'll actually be conducting Young's double slit experiment with microwaves. So what you're going to do in this experiment is that you'll be setting up a slit here with metal because the electromagnetic radiation cannot pass through the metal and you'll be setting up some slit distance D. So D is the distance between the middle of your two slits and then a short distance away you're going to have your receiver so you'll be moving this around in a circle and if we call that angle theta there, so that's the angle between the perpendicular to the slit and the screen or our receiver, then Young's double slit law should follow the equation d sine theta is equal to m lambda, where m is the order. So here we've got the zeroth order, then we have the first order, second order, third order, etc. So m is an integer in this case. This is the equation for where you'll find the maximums from this double slit experiment. So let's have a look at the equipment you'll be using now. So this is the equipment that you're going to have available for this experiment. This is a microwave receiver, so it's got a little scale on the side there, which will give you an idea about the intensity of the microwaves that are being received. This is the microwave transmitter. It's okay, they're very low intensity microwaves, so you're not going to be harmed by the microwaves sent out by this transmitter. You couldn't fry an egg with them. This long thing with the round protractor in the middle is called a goniometer, and you'll be using this to measure the distances between the transmitter and receiver. You've got a couple of stands, and then you've got this polarizer, and again, this is part of the stand. So let's just have a quick look at how you're going to use this equipment. For the first part of the experiment, where you're setting up the standing waves, you'll want to have these parallel to each other. So you'll find it's usually easier to rotate the transmitter so that you can always easily read off the receiver. So you'll be setting that up and then you'll be moving it backwards and forwards and you'll see a series of maximums and minimums in the intensity and you, because you'll just be interested in the path differences, you can record the length of the bottom of the stand where it meets the goniometer. There's markings on here which let you easily read distances. For the second part of the experiment, you're going to be investigating polarization, and so you'll be ro rotating the transmitter and seeing how that affects the intensity of the waves reaching the receiver, and then you'll be putting this polarizer in between. To do that, you've got a stand here, which you will just slide onto the track. It's got a magnet on it, which will let you 
put the polarizer here. Now this polarizer is cut off along the bottom here to show you an angle of 45 degrees. So when you need the polarizer at 45 degrees, just line the bottom of that polarizer there where it's been cut off up with the bottom of the magnet. To get 22.5 halfway in between, you're going to have to do that by eye. It's halfway between these two. So you will just line that up with the stand so that it looks equal on both sides and that's then your 22.5 degrees. So in the final part of the experiment, you're going to need to set up Young's double slit experiment. And to do that, you've got a, another stand here. Again, it's magnetic. You can put this long piece on top of this stand just so that the L-shaped bracket is supported on top of it. This will then go onto the middle of the goniometer there. And you've got two different spacings for your Young's double slit. So you'll put the smaller piece of metal in the middle and then you've got two which you put, oops. Two that you put on the outside. Should take this extra stand off for this part. You'll set it up neater than this, obviously, and then you're able to move the receiver around and find out where your maximums and minimums occur. You can read the angle off the bottom of the goniometer. Okay, so good luck with this experiment, and I hope that you managed to reprodu reproduce Young's exciting results.